Talk about Danny, champ of the world. Talk about Philly. Angel Garcia says Kell Brook's chin was donezo. And he also says they got Terrence Crawford like he's Superman because Bob Aaron moved him right. All that and more. Stay tuned to this video. Smash the like button. We work. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to my channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang gang, notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats, channel donations, the Venmo donations, the Cash App, and the Patreon family. We working. Cash App, Dollar Sign, Boxing Ego. Appreciate you guys for the support. Before I get started, ESPN Plus, link in the description. ESPN Plus, they offer a ton of original content, docu-series, documentaries, archive of some of your favorite past fights, and more. ESPN Plus, it is $5.99 a month for that. If you want more content, you can get the ESPN Plus bundle. This includes ESPN Plus, Hulu, and Disney Plus. Get it right now by clicking my link, $12.99 for the bundle. And it does help the channel continue to grow and achieve and reach new heights in the boxing world. Now, I'm catching up with boxing. Link in the description. There's an interview with Angel Garcia. And he says that Kell Brook's chin was done zone. You know, it was done deal. And they got, meaning like top rank, I'm assuming, and the boxing writers, they got Terrence Crawford like he's Superman. Quick watch. You know, it's a four-minute video. You guys check it out. And um, he basically was saying, I'm not going to say verbatim, but he was basically saying that they're acting like Terrence Crawford is Superman and they got guys who haven't really amassed much in, in their career and they'll be on the pound-for-pound pound top 10 list. He also says that Crawford was moved well with Bob Arum and they're acting like he's Superman, but in his opinion, he believes so basically Cal Brook, you know, realistically he said his chin is done after the Golovkin beating you know he was no longer the same person and then he didn't say this but you you add on right after that Golovkin fight was the Errol Spence fight so he took two sinister ass whoopings back to back right and I feel like the walls are closing in on Terrence Crawford Terrence Crawford has had this public spat and riff with his own promoter his own promoter has thrown him under the bus, and I think it's it's reached its its course and fever pitch where he gotta he gotta decide what he wants to be known for. Because you got people like Angel Garcia, and he's he's in a big fight. You can't say Danny Garcia. Another thing he he always talks about how his son don't get the full praise. And I agree with that, bro. Danny Garcia, listen. You got to take the emotion out of boxing. I don't have any emotion when it comes to the sport. I just look at it and, you know, and I want to celebrate the sport. But Danny Garcia does have a better resume than than Terrence Crawford. You know, that doesn't have anything to do with if those two fought, who would win? You know, because you could say Lomachenko had a, a better resume than Teofimo, but Teofimo beat him. You know, and I don't really even think certain things are debatable. Guys like Sean Porter and Danny Garcia, their resume – is better. Look at who Danny fought at 140 and then look at Crawford, who he fought at 140. You know, they were both champions there. But Crawford, top rank, like Angel Garcia is saying, they had him fighting Hank Lundy's and, you know, some cool, solid guys. Then he had a, some better names like Victor Postal. That's a, a fight Danny Garcia didn't even fight. You know, I think that was Danny's mandatory. But Victor Postal, let's, like, date this back. Victor Postal's best win leading up to the Crawford fight was stopping Lucas Matisse. But Danny Garcia had beat the guy who beat the guy. You know what I'm saying? So Crawford's best, some people say his best career win is either Postal or Gamboa. But Victor Postal's best win going into the Crawford fight was clearly Lucas Matisse. And he made him quit or whatever and stopped him. But Danny Garcia had tenderized and battered 
You got to look out top rank moves. Danny Garcia, when he fought Lucas Matisse, I don't care what anybody says. When Danny fought, they were saying Danny would get his head chopped off and knocked off and he was going to get murdered and destroyed. This is what the public felt at the time. They said Danny is a no hoper in this Lucas Matisse fight. He had just knocked out Peterson and beat Elusigan to Jose and Humberto Soto, who later fought guys like Jesse Vargas Soto at age like 50 or 40 or whatever. So Crawford to, to this day, his best win is arguably Victor Postal and his best win that people gave him credit for was Lucas Matisse. And Danny was the one that actually beat Lucas Matisse when he was in his prime. Lucas Matisse was a factor. Like I said, he was the favorite, if I'm not mistaken, it was on the Mayweather Ganello card. So, you have to put that in perspective. So Angel Garcia does have a point. His son don't get enough credit. Look at Amir Khan. That's another opponent that the two are kind of connected in. But the thing is, when Danny Garcia beat Amir Khan, Amir Khan was in the in the talks to possibly, because Floyd was in jail. I remember this. I've been on boxing and YouTube for a minute. you know. So at the time, if you do the history, Amir Khan was in kind of in talks why Floyd was in jail to possibly get a Khan versus Floyd fight. That's what was going on at the time. Floyd was in jail for the uh, DV plea plea bargain thing, right? He had just beaten Cotto. And this was right around the time Danny fought Amir Khan, and he played a spoiler, and he upset it. He upset the apple cart, and Danny knocked out Khan in a, in a uh, tough fight you know the first two rounds were pretty tough and he got his timing down and he hooked the man Amir Khan face off Crawford fought Khan at 147 when he had several fights in you know three fights or whatever in he had already fought Jeff Horn and, and became a title a title champion in his first fight and then he fought Benavidez and then he got to Khan right so he had like two fights or so at 147, and Amir Khan had already been knocked out by Bradis Prescott, already been knocked out by Danny Garcia, as I just mentioned. And then most recently, he had, for whatever reason, moved up to Canelo way to 155 and got destroyed. So Angel Garcia does have a point. His son don't get credit. His son don't get credit. When Khan was with Freddie Roach, that's how you know it was a while ago, when when Khan fought uh, Danny Garcia, is with Freddie Roach. You know what I mean? And he had blistering speed. He was a pretty offensive. And it was that Danny Garcia fight that made him switch trainers to Virgil Hunter. At the time, Terrence Crawford fought Amir Khan. I don't even know who was training him. I don't even know. I don't remember. I don't remember if Virgil Hunter. I don't think Virgil Hunter was there. I, I'm not. I could be mistaken. Because when he was with Samuel Vargas, I think he switched away from Virgil Hunter. You see what I'm saying? Same thing with Kell Brook. You know, same thing with Kell Brook. Kell Brook's longtime trainer, Dominique Engel, wasn't even with Kell Brook for the Crawford fight. He refused to. He said, you know, with the travel bans and restrictions, I can't I can't get access to move. But before that, he did an interview and he said, I'm not doing it. I'm not training Kell Brook with this little time to prepare. And that's what it was. It was a, it was a short camp and all stuff like that. So Angel Garcia, if you listen to his interview, um, he didn't say everything that I've just expounded upon, but he was on the right track, you know, to be honest. He was on the right track because he was saying guys like Amir Khan, Kell Brook, they were names, but he said Kell Brook, his chin was done for. And, and it's hard not to agree with that statement from Angel Garcia. You could say crazy angel and whatever you want, but it's hard to not agree when Kell Brook on my scorecard – was up two and one, right? He was up two to one. And all of a sudden, the first punch he gets hit with, which is like a, it looked like a jab or something, he, he fell back into the ropes and then he just shelled up and he was done. So it's hard to dispute what Angel Garcia is saying. So all in all, I think Terrence Crawford has some real life decisions to make. People know he's skilled. People know he's a great fighter. But at the end of the day, they got to see him fight his contemporaries. You could talk whatever, oh, Danny will get destroyed by Crawford. But that's only a matter of opinion. The The fact is, 
Danny Garcia is walking in, talking it. He's fighting Amir Khan in his prime, Lucas Matisse in his prime, when when these guys are champions or noted names, right? Not like one foot out and one foot in close to retirement, right? He, he's fighting Errol Spence, who's undefeated and a unified champion. Errol Spence has never had more than the, the amount of belts he has now. He's never had more than that. So in eight days, basically a week, Errol Spence is fighting Danny Garcia and Danny is fighting Errol Spence. Two weeks ago or so, Crawford, top rank, just put him in there with the guy that Errol Spence already knocked out in 2017. And as Angel Garcia said in this interview, he says Triple G put the icing on the cake and he, he feels like that that took too much out of him. And you even had Khan's countrymen mirroring this before the fight, like Kel Brook. You know, he's like, man, Crawford's just too good. But this is kind of the top rank clever matchmaking where it's not to denigrate Crawford because we know he's a beast, but it's hard to gauge if you don't fight the Sean Porter's guys that look fresher. At the point in which Errol Spence fought Sean Porter and at the point in which uh, Crawford fought Kell Brook, even though Kell Brook holds a win over Porter, Errol Spence's win over Porter is more impactful because Porter was a champion coming off a tough fight with you guys, and he looks to be fresher. Kell Brook hadn't made the weight since 2017 in which he was stopped by Errol Spence. So it's going to be interesting to see what Crawford decides. But at this rate, I feel like he, he can't truly get the credit unless he switches to across the pond or if he stays with top rank, he has to demand the fights that he wants. And, and I, I personally, some of what Crawford has said, I don't agree with it or his team. You know, he's saying he's not really even big up on the Errol Spence fight. He don't care anymore. So, I mean, if that if he's reached that level of he's conquered all and, you know, he's tired of chasing or, or mentioning it, then I don't know what to tell you. But it, it's going to be more of this type of um, remarks when you got guys like Sean Porter fighting Broner in, in in close to his prime or whatnot. He got Sean Porter fighting Errol Spence when he's undefeated. You got Danny Garcia and Sean Porter fighting Keith Thurman. You got Keith Thurman who has Pacquiao. Listen, this is very telling. Crawford, he got to make some wise business decisions. That's all I'm going to say. He got to make some wise business decisions. I understand he's from Omaha, kind of a smaller rural place, but he got to think like he's from the big city and do what's right for his career. Because here's the thing. How are you on top rank and you guys, you guys being Manny Pacquiao and Team Crawford, HBO wanted the fight. Bob Arum is on record saying he detonated the fight and made sure it didn't happen between Crawford and and Pacquiao. This is not my opinion. This is what Bob Arum says. He says he didn't want Pacquiao to get hurt, so he made sure that didn't happen. And Pacquiao leaves top rank, right? And Broner gets a fight who's taken losses, something Crawford is not familiar with. And Broner is the first person to get a Pacquiao fight since Pacquiao left top rank. How does that work? But Crawford was working his way up through different divisions, taking two-week notice, Bradis Prescott fights, you know, destroying the John Molinas and Dieri Johns and Thomas Delorme. You guys are in or around the same divisions, and you couldn't get a Pacquiao fight. But Broner, who had lost to Mikey Garcia, lost one-sided to Sean Porter minus the 12th round, lost to Maidana, had a close fight with Pauli Malignaggi, had a big brand and he was able to get Pacquiao. Then Keith Thurman, who has had inactivity, also got Manny Pacquiao before Terrence Crawford, who had been working earnestly and, like I said, moving up in divisions. So, how is Broner with losses, you know, a lot of losses or draws or whatever in a small space of time, right? He able to get Pacquiao his first fight away from top rank. Keith Thurman, again, in activity, gets a Pacquiao fight, a unification. Well, not a unification, a consolidation. But Crawford been looking good and, and sparking dudes and stuff like that, and he can't get Pacquiao the whole time you guys are on the same roster. You know, you got to look at your own promoter at that point. Now your promoter's throwing you under the bus saying that um, you you can't promote yourself like the likes of Teofimo and Shakur and Mayweather and Pacquiao, and you need to do better, and I'm washing my hands of you. I'm turning your project over to my son, 
stepson, right? Todd Debo. And meanwhile, Crawford keeps getting these these fights that he even said, this is not ego. This is not my opinion. Terrence Crawford is on record saying he didn't even want the Kilbrook fight, but that's what you're getting. And then now when Angel Garcia and others are saying like, man, this man's chin was done for. And, and, you know, ultimately, ultimately the boxing world sees this and sees how the fight play out, plays out. And you don't get the maximum credit. These are the opponents that you're getting put in with. And I understand Crawford, he doesn't necessarily choose all his opponents. Maybe he'll fight everybody. But you, you, what you do choose is your business. You choose who you do business with. And sometimes you got to put your foot down. Like you see Conor McGregor, he started making money with Mayweather in, in the Mayweather fight. And he made a type of money he clearly wasn't making in the UFC. So he started demanding a little bit more from the UFC. Okay, I got the proper 12 whiskey. You know, we, I need, I need, uh, you know, some, I need my proper 12 whiskey and alcohol to, to be on the mat. And, you know, I need to get some money that way. I need equity in the company. You know, he started demanding different things because he, he realized what was out there. So if Crawford just, you know, is just content fighting Kell Brook and he's not going to get a lot of credit, then it's going to show by his business moves. You know, it's that simple. It's that simple. And just how he's looking off to the sunset, he's going to be looking at all the fights he can't get. You know, that's what has been, been the case. So you can't really be mad at me or Angel Garcia. Kell Brook, his chin did look done. He was winning on my scorecard, 2-1. to one. Crawford opened up in the third round. I gave third round to Crawford. And as soon as Crawford opened up and caught him with one shot, the fight was over. So this man, Kell Brook, was in there with Golovkin at 160. And I know Crawford is accurate and hits hard and he's a beast. But Gro Golovkin is a big puncher and a big dude. You mean to tell me he was out there kind of holding his own for five rounds with, with Golovkin. But then after that fight and the Spence fight, he, he just didn't look the same, bro. You know, he gets hit with one shot and then he, he doesn't know what to do. That's a that's a it's like shell shock, PTSD. You know he, he's 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 like a fish out of water at that point. That's a sign that retirement is is screaming your name. And if Crawford keeps fighting these types of fights, then it's going to be hard for people to defend when he's in a division with an immense talent pool. And, and you can say, oh, but we're willing to fight anyone. You you got to get those fights. It's just it's non negotiable. Or, you know, people still criticize who you're fighting and saying, hey, you fought Jose Benavides that got shot. You got fought Jeff Horn, who really didn't beat Pacquiao. You you fought Amir Khan with the glass chin after Canelo destroyed him and Garcia destroyed him. You know, you fought Kell Brook, who was damaged goods. I mean, you're going to continue getting this criticism. So the choice is his. Let me know how I did. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. As always, hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego signing off. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button, and you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing. Mm -hmm.